great job by the Hamlin cheerleaders. And yes, I am wearing my bib <laughs> again in honor of Kelsey Passholt, who I caddied for the last two days at the Symmetra Tour event in the rain this afternoon. We were drenched rats, but we finished. So I'm very proud of what she did. All right. Our third Football Friday already, believe it or not. I'm Mark Obenden. He is Zach Bohr. You're going to get a sponsor's exemption on the Champions Tour year next. That'd be awesome. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I'm guessing it's going to happen. We've got a great show for you. We'll actually have some golf after the show. Several big games tonight. Show brought to you, as always, by RepairableVehicles.com. They, they had a big week last week with their car, yeah. by the way. Yeah. Uh, we start our coverage with a huge early season game in Iowa. Boyden Hall, Rock Valley, with a convincing win over Western Christian last week, was at West Lyon, where the Wildcats dominated Central Lyon to start the season. Watch Look this run by big boy Monty run. Potaboom as he shook off a face mask, and he gets a big game down the sideline. That led to this. Potaboom punches it in from two yards Gotta out. Gotta let him finish. And uh, you bet, West Lyon goes up 35-7. Looks like it's a rout. Looks like the game is over. Don't count the Nighthawks out, although this kind of play isn't going to make it any better. Potaboom with a pick. But the Nighthawks eventually get things going. After a missed field goal, Boyden Hall driving again. J.T. Van Tall hitting Austin Roseboom. With that last name, he should be playing for West Lyon, and right? Jay Roseboom's son, an offensive coach for Boyd Rock Valley. <laughs> uh, that's, yeah, kind of odd. Doesn't go down without a fight. Van Tall with a touchdown, but West Lyon hangs on to win 35-28 to in a thriller. We also had a huge early season game here in town at Howard Wood Field, and Jack Ebel was on hand to show us the highlights, Jack. Mark, the Washington Warriors sure looked like the preseason favorites last Saturday night in Brandon. Tonight, they took on crosstown rival Roosevelt. The Riders also opened with a big win last Friday at Rapid City Central. Here's Jaden Johansson off a of play fake, finds Shiloh Flanagan. That's an easy early touchdown. There's John Anderson after a big win checking out the game. Now after a fumble on the Riders' next possession, Johansson just keeps it for himself. That's 14-0 Warriors in the first. Less than two minutes later, it's in the second quarter. Tupac Kapaya goes untouched for the touchdown. That's a 21 skunk early. This time, when you got Kapaya play actions, fakes me out a little bit. He hits Zach Hine, who he's gone. That's 42 yards for the touchdown. The Warriors continuing to cruise. They even have a flyover. They're so good. Tupac Kapaya, where is he? Oh, bam! He's gone. Bursts free. And there's the touchdown. Washington goes on to cruise in this one. 41 to 7. Boom! Boom! That, that probably looked familiar to Brandon Valley, who was hosting Lincoln tonight. Both teams looking to bounce back from the loss. Links were all smiles at half because they're up 23 to 3, but in the third quarter, things start to get interesting. Preston Eisenbraun to Zach Hansen, 43 yards for the touchdown. All of a sudden, 23 to 10. Now, Brandon Valley was forced to punt on their next series. They were forced to punt. They didn't quite punt because Drake Gertis. Blocks it, and it's going to go all the way down to the one-yard line. Lincoln would run it in from there, and it was 23-17 to after three quarters. In the fourth quarter, the Lynx backed up facing a third and long Zach Skolton. A lot of good Zachs in this game. For, you know, I kind of key in on that for this some reason. Skolton with a big first down run on third down, and that sets this up. few plays later, Skolton on the run again. This time, he's not going to run. He gonna pass and he finds Cole Siegfried who juggles and nice. makes a terrific touchdown catch. Great fight from Lincoln, but Brandon Valley hangs on to win 38-24. That was a pretty exciting game. Yeah, it got very good in the second half. All right, Washington again, 41 to seven. I have a hard time believing anyone can beat the Warriors this year. They yeah. are really good. Pierre over Yankton. It was Watertown over Rapid City Central and two big games tomorrow night. The Dakota Bowl at seven o'clock, O'Gorman and Harrisburg, number 39. Yes, it started the first year I moved to Sioux Falls, and Mitchell and Brookings also is tomorrow night. On to Class 11A and the Titans of T area, hosting uh, perennial powerhouse of St. Thomas More. Two, two Titans in this game. Actually, one <laughs> Titans. Well, yeah. And that's Hunter West with Titanic escapes, run right and there. And he scores out of the pocket to make it 13 to nothing in the second quarter. The Titans have the lead. Shea, uh, Kane. Kavanaugh goes deep to Jake Bowenkamp. Great catch for the touchdown, and the Cavaliers are rallying. After a Titans fumble, K 
Cavanaugh rolls out, hits Always Jake Larson for the touchdown. There. Cavaliers take a 14-13 lead. A defensive second half by the Titans, and they would finally break three on this. Carter Slickhouse for the touchdown run, and that was your winning touchdown in a thriller, 20 to 14 in favor of T-Area. The Mustangs of Tri-Valley starting the night ranked fifth in 11A, hosting a pretty good Lennox team on a good opening week. Zach Leisinger with a touchdown pass to Ethan Gilbert, and the Orioles are flying as they take the early advantage, 7-0. More from another good Zach. There's really no such thing as a bad Zach in this world. He goes to Cameron Bartman. Huh. The Bartman name actually done some credit with this one. It's 13-0 Lennox, but in the second quarter, Noah Jewett for the host team with a long bomb to Logan Matthew gets down inside the five yard line as they just knock him out before he can get into the land of six. You know what, just like that Boyden Hole Rock Valley game, you gotta let Noah Jewett finish it off. Tough run into the end zone. Actually it gets fumbled, Lennox recovered. But Tri-Valley scores. Tri -Valley does go on to score later. 37 seconds and... left to win the ball game. 27 to 20, your final now. The Cavaliers of Roncalli were ranked second in 11B after back-to-back -back shutouts to start the season. Canton up three to nothing in this one, so the shutout streak is gone. A bot snap leads to an interception by Roncalli's Hunter Hilton. The Cavaliers, oh, however, on, could not capitalize on the pick. Late in the second quarter, it's only three nothing. Watch this punt from Caden Verley. It goes all the way down wow. to the one Good effort yard by that guy, line. too. Good effort by the guy who's yeah. down that. Now, keep in mind, it's still 3 nothing, and they had pinned the Cavaliers deep. That leads to this. Same guy that punted it gets a pick. And guess where he ends up with the ball? <laughs> a, a pick six <laughs> for, for Caden Burley. And then right before halftime, Scott Peterson finding... Christian Beachler for the touchdown. It was all Canton tonight. They were excited when they called in the final score, 38 to nothing. Wow. All right, we moved to 9AA football where Hamlin would host Webster in a battle of undefeateds. First quarter, Bryce Williams avoids the defense, looks to throw, can't find anybody, so he runs. Good call. 17 yards for a touchdown. It's 7 nothing Chargers. Later in the first, it's Williams again, runs it to the edge. And then back to the middle, and this That's is a great terrific. run. He gains 30 yards on that play, and on the same drive, it's going to be Nash Grantham who takes it into the end zone. It's 14 to nothing in favor of. There's a couple of good Granthams. Hamlin, uh, Hamlin's Chargers. All right, later in the second, Webster on the drive. The quarterback, Braden Holland, gets to the sideline. He goes 17 yards down to the 10, and a couple of plays later, it's going to be Holland throwing to Sterling Rausch for the touchdown with just 30 seconds left in the half, but it was all Hamlin after that, your final 35 to seven. Respect the Powder Blues. And finally, we head to Minnesota High School football, their opening week, Laverne hosting Maple River. Maple River rolling on their opening drive, but on a third and goal, Jed Deyema trips up the quarterback and Payne Bennett finishes off as they hold the Eagles to a field goal, it's three nothing. Now Laverne dealing with a lot of injuries, they had some suspensions as well, so a really shorthanded bunch and the Eagles, uh, they. Took advantage of it. Nathan Moore on the keeper. This time he does get into the end zone for the touchdown. It's 10-0. Maple River after a quarter. Second quarter, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Moore into the end zone. 17-0 at that point as Maple River wins comfortably 24-6. All right, West Line again, 35-28. Tri-Valley 27-20 on that late touchdown. Uh, we would have had highlights of this, but it was called early because of an injury. We certainly hope everything turns out for the player who was injured in that game in Del Rapids. Canton, uh, Blank, and Moncali, Hamlin. Uh, that final was 35 to seven. A T area, 20 to 14. Winner, a shutout of West Central. Howard over Parker, Britton Heckla, 54 zip. Arlington Lake, Preston, and Sunshine Bible win tonight, along with Corsica Stickney. They're good again this year. Baltic, uh, Baltic rolls up 55 tonight. Chamberlain, 51 zip. Clark Willow Lake, 50 zip. Cologne had 64 tonight. The Smet wins, along with Gregory and Langford, both winning by 50 points, as did Laura Brule, Madison, Madison over Belfouche. Uh, Hanson and Red Cloud both win, along with Jackson County Central and Murray County Central. Sioux Center and Spirit Lake both winning in Iowa. West Sioux, 49-6, and Hot Springs wins. A couple of more, and we'll have all these on our website, by the way, shortly. Gayville Volland beats Centerville, 38-8. Dakota Valley, 65, Todd County, 22. 
It was uh, Millbank 55, Redfield Dolan nothing, Woonsocket, Woonsocket, Western Springs, Sanborn Central, Sanborn Central 27, 27 to 6, six over Mount Vernon. That's dual, a lot of words. Dual, dual beat Great Plains Lutheran 46 to 8. And again, way to go, Kelsey Patzel. We're going to see some golf highlights coming up after the break.